Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants. Um, it's a super rainy day in Vancouver, BC, Canada today. Actually it's been rainy for all day yesterday and still really wet and dark today. So I figure it's a perfect day to film my grow tent update video for you guys and take a look at some plants in the grow tent uh, to see how they're doing. I don't think I've done one in a long time. And also, I have been really super intimidated with using sulfur to treat my Hoyas, but everybody in the community, well not everybody, so many people in the community have been doing it and really swearing by the results of um, treating Hoyas with sulfur uh, for broad mites and flat mites and how the growth, process, uh, the growth after it, having treated their Hoyas has been really amazing. But I've been really intimidated because you guys, most of you know, I have a really large Hoya collection. But I went ahead and I did it, and I, I guess I will show you guys a little bit of how I do it to, if some of you are also intimidated by doing it, um, you will see that it's actually not intimidating at all. Uh, I want to thank Jeff for walking me through his process and encouraging me to go for it and even offering to come in and help me spray my Hoyas and paint my Hoyas with me with sulfur. I really appreciate it. Um, anyway, so let's go in the grill tent and check them out. Here's the grill tent. Um, let's see, the temperature is around 20 degrees now. It's in uh, November, early November as I'm filming and the temperature is pretty cold outside like um, let's see what's the temperature this morning five degrees Celsius outside um, so but it's still keeping pretty warm in the grill tent which I'm happy about come winter time I think it's gonna be a little bit um, colder. I just gave my Hoy, uh, all my plants in here a little spray, not really watering, but I kind of like to open up the grow tent and spray the plants to uh, with some calcium, magnesium, like water solution, and also to just kind of give them a little bit of a shower. And after I do that, I will actually keep the grow tent open for a few hours so that, you know, they don't, it's not, the air is not stagnant in there. They're wet, but there's like uh, flowing air in there. Uh, maybe before we go into looking at plants, I'll just tell you guys what I do for the sulfur treatment. Um, this is the brand that I got. I just got it from Canadian Tire. It's a sulfur dust. And I just follow, uh, it's actually a fungicide, um, mitocide. So you know, you guys know I have like powdery mildew issues. So um, this might be helpful. I haven't tried it for um, powdery mildew before, but mm, I'm looking forward to trying so the solution I did what I did is um, mixing a tablespoon of that stuff within a liter of water I did a big batch and this is just part of the solution and make sure you shake it up really well um, and then you just spray your Hoyas top top and bottom like all this cover all the stems let me just do this uh, do one and show you this is a big one this is my Matil so you just really like cover the Hoya. Um, so I will spray the bottom and then I will use my hand to lift up the, the stems and leaves and like try to spray the bottom of the leaves too. So making sure that the entire plant is covered. Um, I would, if I were you, put on a mask and gloves as you do it so you are in as little contact with this um, substance as possible. It's just mildly toxic to human and yeah, so it's probably a better idea to cover yourself a little bit before doing this process. So as you can see, that was super quick and I ended up being able to treat my entire uh, grow tents worth of Hoyas within 15, 20 minutes. So that was pretty efficient. Um, and the regimen, a lot of people are saying you would do that once a week for eight weeks um, in a row so that you are getting rid of all the uh, all of the mites that are that might possibly be there. So that's how I do it. I hope that's helpful for you guys. But why don't we start looking at the plants? Um, well, should we look at Hoyas first? There's not a whole lot of new growth with my Hoyas. This Hush Kellyanna though has been doing really well. Um, it's been throwing out new growth. Oh, another thing I want to mention is like I thought the sulfur treatment would make Hoyas it would look really ugly, but actually 
it's not that big of an issue. Like you can see there's a little bit of residue here, some residue here, but like on Swashi Hoyas, it's barely visible. Um, you can see a little bit on this Hoosh Kellyanna too. There's some new growth here and uh, it's got some new growth, baby leaves growing out of here. It's really, really cute. I love this plant. I'm so glad I bought this one um, to try again, like the, a fuller plant that's more established. Um, I'm just making some room on the bottom so I could come in. Um, what else is happening here? I got this uh, chicken farm cross, I think, Dekia from my friend Jeff and Mark. And they, these were two cuttings and they have now rooted really well. And it's got a little growth point here. And this one's got like a little new stem that it's working on. So hopefully we will have some new leaves coming soon. Um, <clears throat> I love this Hoya Carnosa Splash that I got from Hoya Etc. Uh, when I first got it, it was just a cutting that it's now rooted really well again in perlite. And it's put out one leaf. I don't think this one's gonna be splashy, but that's okay. And there's a couple of fuzzy new leaves here happening too. Really, really cute. Um, what else? Yeah, I really don't have a lot of new Hoya growth too. Oh, to show you guys, but this is exciting. This, um, uh, Hoya Sigillatus Borneo uh, Silver. This is the cutting that I got from Alice and it's uh, this is the first leaf that it's putting out. Is it fucking, this is so cute. I'm so excited about this one. Yeah. And finally, my uh, Hoya, what's this? Ko Kochan Island has finally rooted and working on its first new leaf too. I'm really excited about that. I got that cutting from my friend Helen. Um, yeah, I love that Hoya. Another th one that I could talk about is this <laughs> New Guinea Goes. This one have had root rot multiple times and also root mealybugs. And recently I had to treat it with, for scale. <laughs> it's just been through the ringer. And then I just sprayed it for mites too as a preventative measure but it has finally worked on its very first new leaf after um, having gone through all those treatments yeah so that's exciting oh it looks like who's this Th this is my um hold on vitalina something um it is finally also has a little new growth plant here that's exciting right um, this guy, my um, Hoya, I really love this one, the Waliniana. It has just been super colorful um, and really, really beautiful. This is the plant. Oh, uh, we're on the moss one now. I might as well show you my Hoya Quinquanervia. Is it Quinquanervia? Yeah, Quinquanervia. Um, so it's been mounted in here and it has been growing. Oh, this is the, this is the original. Quinquanervia. It has been growing pretty well. And look, it's got like a new grow point to the side of the vine, which is really cool. Oops, sorry. And then up along the, this is, it's a leaf too. And it has like a new growth here too. And they're so red. Isn't that gorgeous? so pretty um another plant that is like grows super well is the hoya canforifolia it also has um i have had to treat it for scale um but it's so um, a really lovely hoya it's lined over here um there are some new leaves there you go really gorgeous it's hanging over there. And it looks like this um, Hoya, who's that? Uh, Rosita is putting out some new growth too. Pretty. Oh, the Hoya SP um, AFF Bertonier has, even though it's red underneath the grow light, it doesn't really sustain the variegation. Uh, this is a variegated one, but the new growth is so yummy. It's so pretty. I love this one. 
absolutely gorgeous yes um and then this one also i just showed it in my top 10 favorite hoya recently the cali montana mini look how cute it is look at the baby new leaf and yeah it's just such a such a pretty hoya it's got like a metallic sheen to the to the leaf super lovely um my hoya rebecca continues to grow so many because uh, i highlighted this in my previous um, top 10 favorite Hoya video and so many of you told me that it looks like a Lacunosa instead of Rebecca but I'm still not convinced I mean this looks like a Rebecca to me what do you guys think here doesn't it look like a Rebecca tell me what you think yeah that's the moss wall um the Florida bronze just put out this new leaf and it's still pretty bronzy. It's always a treat when it's first put out its new leaf. It kind of darkens later on, but I like that bronzy color and I love that shape of leaf. It's super adorable. That's the moss wall. It's not my favorite, but I mean, I like the way it looks in the grill tan. It kind of feels like, uh, makes it more like a jungle because it's so full, but I actually don't feel like my plants grow um, all that amazingly on the moss wall. Okay, and to this side, anybody else? Um, da -da -da. Mm, Sigillatus is always beautiful. Look at this new leaf is super big again, and then and then another baby leaf that's not growing. So funny. Yeah, not much new growth on the Hoya front because it's getting colder, but also hopefully after having treated them with um, the sulfur, we can see some new growth. Um, this is a new leaf that's recently like it's become more mature. This is the Hoya 092. Yeah. All right, guys, let's look at some aeroids. I got this golden violin variegated from my friend Jeff and Mark too. Um, and ooh, it's rooted. I got it as a cutting and it's finally working on like a new growth. It's been kind of, the new growth has been there pretty stagnant for a little while, but it looks like it's finally gonna turn into a leaf soon. And hopefully some more beautiful leaves will follow from, from that. Um, all right. <laughs> My favorite begonia, Sinbad, it's putting out some flowers. Actually, I've never tried to smell that um, plant to see if the flower is fragrant. Let me just try. No, I don't smell anything. Some, some of my begonia surprised me with their fragrant flowers though. But this one is still doing really well in here. It loves living in the grow tent. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it here no matter how big it ends up growing. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I love it in here anyways. There's that one. Oh, an exciting news. Um, I shared a cutting of my Jose Bueno philodendron to, with my friend. We traded and uh, finally where I cut the plant has put out a new little leaf. So, so yeah, it's back to growing again. I'm excited about that. Another one that um, I cut is my Florida, excuse me, my Florida Beauty. It started putting out some green leaves, so then I decided to give it a chop, but the first leaf that grew out is green again. So we'll see um, what the second new leaf will look like. I don't know if it's gonna be just, I lo lose its um, variegation altogether now. Um, I think we'll ju I'll just have to be patient and see. Uh, this is the uh, philodendron sodori. I love, I love it so much. It's just got that like plump look, like pillowy, and but it's so silvery and shiny. It's such a pretty plant. Um, it's not really sizing up. I'm not putting it. I used to have like lazy moss pull, but I haven't really um, extended the moss pull for it. So it's got, it doesn't really have anything to climb onto. Um, so the leaf size is, is, uh, has gotten like pretty tiny, but it's still really pretty. Um, I'm excited about 
my this begonia, one of my favorites again, one of my original favorite begonias. It is called Begonia Lucerna and it has been growing really well in here too. It's putting out a new leaf. I love how coral it looks. And also recently, let me take it out and show you guys. At the bottom of the stem, it's put out a new, new growth point. So it's gonna become a little bit fuller of a plant which is exciting. I hope it doesn't snap. It's pretty top heavy now. There you go. The, I have this um, Philodendron Gloriosum in here, but the new leaf is coming out like under other leaves. It's not getting a lot of light. So it's kind of yellowish, but hopefully as it matures, it's gonna, it will darken. Yeah. Uh, one of the plants that I got Recently that I really love was my uh, Monstera Esquilato, but both huge leaves just drop and yellow within a really short time. And this is the new growth and it's finally uh, turning into something. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty decent sized leaf too. I'm excited to see what it looks like once it's unfurled. Um, this is a propagation project of my Begonia Tamaya. I just put a bunch of stems in there and it looks like it's started to leaf out. And this big chunky stem on the top, it's also got new growth happening too. It was growing in um, the open environment and it just didn't do well. And also, yeah, it just wasn't looking good. So I decided to chop everything and restart the plant over. Another plant that I am restarting over is <laughs> this one. This guy, I grew out the corms um, in the grow tent and I decided to take it out and put it in uh, the outside plant shelf and it just, the transition wasn't really good. The leaves looked really ugly. So I chopped all the leaves and brought this whole, like all the corms back into the grow tent and then within a short time, it, they just started, uh, it just started sprouting new leaves again. So it's, it's good, it's really cute. I love that one. Um, my, Philodendron pink princess that I brought home from Ontario for my trip. This is the only first, the only leaf it's put out. It's not very pretty. And I transferred it into pond. I just, okay, I see some fresh roots in there. I think the, um, it just didn't, the adaptation was a little bit hard for it, the transition. So it just um, hasn't been working on any New leaves, although I can see a little bit of new growth, new leaf coming soon from this leaf. Yeah, that's okay though. Um, I just took this chunk out of the prop box. I'm not entirely sure what it is. I think it's philodendron, is it the Ruba, Rubiconum? What is it called? I don't remember, but I'll have to wait till it to, uh, for it to mature a little bit more before before I know, but yeah, it's super cute. It just came from the prop box. My newest obsession, the Philodendron UPI. This is the newest leaf. I love that tiny little lobe and then this big bottom. Super adorable. Um, yeah, it's got a little new growth here, but I, I think it will look really, really good once the, the leaves mature a little bit. It is a climber, but I see a lot of people just, it also seems to have a really bushy um, growth structure when I see it in other people's photos. So I don't know. I will have to see how it grows to decide how I will continue to grow it. Um, over here, my, my cute little duck feed plant. I have one propagation that's, uh, that seems to be working okay. Uh, but I don't know, I find this plant to be so fussy. Um, I just don't, I haven't gotten its care down packed. Like I just don't know how to care for it right yet. So I'm just uh, leaving it as is and not cutting it and just um, growing it. Um, but I do really want to be able to have lots of these and be able to share it. But yeah, I w they will grow some new leaves and the old leaves will like die off so I, Always just have like a small plant of this. And this one you guys have recently seen, it's climbing up the 
grid in the back, which is cool. I like it. I like, I really like this plant. There you go, guys. Um, oh, I have some Anthurian seedlings uh, growing in here. Oh, is that a new leaf? Super cute. This one is a Papillon Pap something times for is it Forgetia? Yes. I don't know if I need to cup it, even though it's in the grow tent. It's just uh, me being extra. Yeah, you know they once when they're seedlings, they all look the same. So there's no point showing you guys individual ones, but they're really cute. I really adore them, and um, I would like to have more. And then this one is like actually seedlings in here, crystallinum cross um, pap, but I don't see any um, new growth yet. Hopefully they're just doing their thing. <laughs> what, what was in here? Oh, what? Oh, this was just to prop this up so it's closer to the light, I see. All right, guys, um, that was like a really quick and really chatty um, video. I hope you enjoyed it anyways. Hold on, maybe I'll just flip it over so you can see me. I'm just sitting over here on the ground. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I just wanted to make a quick video update of like some things that are happening here and like talk a little bit about the sulfur. I just did it yesterday and I'm excited to share with you guys that it's not intimidating. I feel like in my mind, before I try something new, I always make it so much harder than it actually is. Like everything, like even like going to a new place, driving to a new place, and I, I stop myself a lot of times because of this imagined difficulty, but once I do it, most of the things are actually like really manageable, um, and this sulfur treatment is the same. I really like stop myself for a long time, but, but after talking to my friend Jeff and like actually trying it out, it's really nothing to it. So if you guys want to give it a try, if you have any questions, um, let me help you overcome your anxiety about it if you have any. Um, and I hope this video has already helped. Anyways, that's all from me today and I will see you guys soon again. Bye.